In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to generate HTML assets as your final output for your AI agents. This is going to use the generate asset block and it's going to increase the fidelity of your AI agent outputs. Let's go ahead and get started. You can see here that I have a AI agent and its workflow. There are several workflows here. And this AI agent is a lightweight version of the deep research agent, which is available in the agent store. We are applying all of the concepts from our previous videos. So I'm going to walk through how this agent works. First, we collect a topic and this is done via a user input. And then we refine that topic using this user context block where the AI is going to generate questions so that it can gather additional contextual information. We're then taking all of this contextual information and we have a generate text block, which is generating some search queries for Google search. And then we're gonna use this sub workflow called research where we search Google that's going to return several different URLs and then we are going to scrape each individual URL using this other run workflow block and so in the end we get several different uh, URLs content from all of these URLs all of that is brought back into the main workflow in which point we compile all of that information and generate our long form article. And I am using the output schema of JSON because I'm structuring all of this information in a very specific way. And if we look at the sample output here, you can see that the structured output has a title and a subtitle. We have different sections for our article and each of those sections is going to have a header and an intro paragraph and an image. And then we can have some subsections if we'd like using an H3 header and some paragraphs within those subsections. At the bottom, I'm also including all of the sources in an array and each source is gonna have a title and a URL. So jumping back into the main workflow, we generate all of this and then we are going to iterate through each of those sections that are generated via AI and we're going to generate an image for it so that we can have some supporting visuals in our article. That's using this run workflow block where we uh, pass through the section JSON and then uh, we have this generate text block which creates an image prompt. Then we use an image model to generate the image and then that gets passed back up to the main workflow and so we have two pieces of data we have the article JSON and then we have this array of images so then I'm just using a custom function which I have here called add images to report and that is taking both of those pieces of data and combining them into one uh, single variable with a JSON schema and so what we get, I'm not going to run this in this video, I've already run it just so that I could have the sample data, but what we get at the end of this is this JSON. And this JSON is super important because it has all of the pieces of data that we need in order to build our web page. And so the structure can vary. You can uh, have some forethought and determine what you actually need. This is just a framework that I've used, and that is to include a title, a subtitle, and this array of sections that can have more data types uh, nested inside of it. We get this really long article, right? At the very bottom, uh, we have all of these uh, final considerations and things like that. So now what we want to do is present this information as an HTML asset. And so what I've done here to illustrate that rather than actually running this whole workflow one more time is I just made this uh, small little workflow here. And inside of that, I have saved that, um, that JSON here. So let's go ahead and start creating our HTML asset. We're going to generate a web page that we can display to our end user. And we're going to do that by adding a generate asset block. Now from here, we have some stuff on the right hand side to configure. First, we're going to configure the source type. And since we're going to be writing this web page in HTML, we want to make sure that our source is an HTML document. This is very important because if you have just markdown text, you're going to see um, this displayed as markdown. 
Um, and then we have our source document. And this is going to be the template that we use that is going to be filled in uh, with all of that content that's generated. We're gonna jump back to this in a second because I'm gonna show you something really cool. Uh, but first, let's configure our outputs. First, we have our output variable. So we're gonna be outputting the completely filled in HTML. So I'm gonna put in uh, HTML as our final output. We want that format to also be HTML. And then we can choose to automatically rehost any third party images in the final output. Um, depending on whether you're using third party images, I would suggest you rehost them on Mind Studio just in case the image disappears from um, the place where you pulled it from. And then lastly, what we're gonna do uh, before we, we finish all of this is we're gonna add a display content block at the very end of this, where we are simply going to display all of the HTML. And in that display content block, we wanna make sure that our display type is set to HTML rather than to message. So this is going to display that final web page to the user. So let's go ahead and jump back into this generate asset block. And we have not touched the source document. This is where we're going to be adding our HTML. And I highly recommend that you expand this using this icon because this presents us with a nice interface for us to add our HTML on the left and then see a preview of that HTML on the right. So for example, if I add uh, simply hello, whoops, hello world, you can see that we have the text here. We can even wrap this in some H1 tags. So let's go ahead and wrap that and we'll close out the tags. There we go. You can see that now we have hello world uh, a little bit bigger. And if you know how to write HTML and know how to uh, code web pages, this is just a blank canvas for you. You have uh, one place, it's just an HTML document, so you don't have access to CSS or JavaScript. You're gonna have to add all of that as style tags and um, script tags inside of your HTML document, but totally possible. Um, if you don't know how to write HTML, don't worry. You don't need to know how to write HTML in order to use this block because I have created a helper uh, agent in order to help you generate that HTML for you. Uh, it's called the uh, asset helper and you can see it here in the for developer section. So here we have the generate asset helper. And when we run this, What's going to happen is it's going to ask us if we already have some sample JSON. Now, in this case, I do have sample JSON. I have this, uh, this sample JSON here. And the way I found this, uh, it was in the debugger. I can see here that I get this, uh, this long variable here called updated report. And that's where that value is coming from here. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this, uh, sample JSON. Here we go. And this report has the images. So I'm going to go ahead and use this copy icon. And I'm going to say, yes, I have the sample JSON. Then we have two places. We have a place to uh, add the variable of the JSON. And in this case, our variable is called updated report. So uh, your variable name might be a little different. And then we can paste in our sample JSON here. And don't worry if it's not structured, it's okay if it's like this, the AI is going to understand um, and still build our HTML asset for us. And then the last thing is we need to describe the type of web page we're looking to build. So the more details that you add about the web page, the better, but just make sure that it's very clear so it's more about communicating what you're looking to make. I'm gonna keep it simple and I'm gonna say, I'd like to make a long form article page. And then I'm simply going to click on next. I, and you can see here in the example that you can add some style notes, you can add general structure to this if you'd like, uh, but I'm just gonna click next and see what happens. And at this point, it's going to ask some clarifying questions about the HTML page that we are trying to generate. So you can see what kind of layout do you envision? I'm gonna say single column. It's then gonna ask, how would you like to organize the content hierarchy? And I'm gonna say headings and subheadings. What kind of typography do we want to use? And I'm gonna use casual sans serif fonts. What is our priority for the reading experience? And I'm gonna say balanced between scanning and immersive reading. What color scheme do we want? Let's go uh, dark and dramatic, or maybe we go, let's go neutral and monochromatic. 
How would you like to handle the visual elements? And I'm going to say, um, I'm going to use other and say images uh, should be at the top of each section. And I'm going to go ahead and submit that. How would you like to handle spacing and white space within the article? I'm going to say I want a lot of white space for a clean look. How important is it for the article to be easily readable on mobile devices? I'm going to say very important. What are your expectations for the article length? Um, this doesn't matter. Um, so I'm just going to say uh, long in-depth articles. For your long in-depth articles, we'd expect the content density to be like, and it's going to be um, in-depth explanations with some supporting points. What's the expected frequency? So it's kind of going on this tangent that's not really relevant, but you can see I didn't even answer the question. It already determined that it had enough information in order to proceed. Um, and at this point, it is generating a design plan uh, to format our HTML page. And then it's going to actually generate the HTML that we can copy and paste into our generate asset block. So I'm going to go ahead and skip ahead to when this finishes, and then I'll show you what to do next. Okay, so it has finished generating, and you can see here that there are some instructions. It's going to say copy and paste this HTML into the source document tab of our generate asset block. Make sure that we have pasted the correct sample JSON in the test data to see it in the preview window. So let's go ahead and follow these instructions. First, I'm going to copy and paste this into the source document tab. So there we go. I'm copying and pasting this HTML. And you can see here that we have a blank page. And that's because we didn't do the second part of those instructions. We need to make sure that we have our test data set up. And this is the variable name and the JSON that we had uploaded previously. So again, our variable name in this case is called updated report. And our uh, value is just going to be this JSON here. So I'm copying that and I'm just going to replace it with the JSON here. And so now you can see on the right hand side that we have the preview of our article. And if I close this uh, code side, we'll get a better look at it. And you can see it looks really nice. It has some images above each section. It's bringing in all of the um, additional Im uh, imagery and separating the headers and subheaders. And so now that we know that our sample is working, let's go ahead and make sure that our workflow is all set up in the right way. I'm going to go back to this HTML asset and we want to make sure we format this as HTML and the source type is also HTML. And then again, just as a reminder, we want to display that HTML variable and choose our display type as HTML. So without running this entire workflow, I'm simply going to pass through that JSON here so that I can show you that this is working properly. We're going to set this as the entry workflow. And then we can go ahead and open up the draft agent. And you can see here that we get this really nice looking web page. And this is all done using the generate asset block. Now keep in mind that this is not the only thing you can generate with the generate asset block. HTML can do all kinds of different things. In fact, if you look at some other agents in the store, like the uh, generate uh, uh, LinkedIn carousel or Instagram carousel, this also uses generate asset. The generate a podcast has generate asset. So I definitely recommend that you open these up and see how those work. And for those that aren't familiar with HTML, let's quickly go into this generate asset block one more time. And I'm going to show you kind of how to change a couple of things um, and how to look at this uh, document here. So you can see on the left hand side that we have this tag and this tag is called style. And inside of the style tag, you'll notice that there are different uh, things, article container, section image, and we can really easily play around with these values. So for example, this border radius, if we don't know what the border radius does, it's very easy to just change this from eight pixels to let's say 24 pixels and see what happens. And you can see that it changed the roundness of the corners here. And that's really cool. And that allows you to take this asset and continue to modify it. So you can see here that they're clearly labeled. It's got font size for the H1. So let's go ahead instead of 2.5 rem, why don't we try 5 rem and see what happens. And you can see that the, uh, the 
title became much larger. Let's go ahead and change this to three rim and see what happens. You can see this subtitle got larger and we can start to play around with these style tags and uh, see what happens in our page and begin to understand how we can style our own pages. Now, the other thing to take into account uh, that you might encounter is you want to make sure that you're pulling the path. Uh, correctly when you are calling variables. You can see here we're adding variables with these double curly braces inside of our HTML. And that's really important because that allows that dynamic content to render properly inside of this preview. Now you can see here that using this test data called updated report and the JSON, it's using the uh, proper syntax here. It's got, it's going in the path and it's using handlebars, each updated report dot sections. And then from that section, it's pulling the image and the, uh, the header here and the intro, and it's going through each of the subsections. And so this is a really good way to begin to understand how these, uh, special syntax works for each and for if, and start playing around with them inside of your HTML. Uh, the other thing to note is that if you see something like that is outside, uh, that doesn't have this updated report, um, you know, title, this variable name, you might need to add the variable name at the beginning. So for example, if this just said title by itself, this actually wouldn't appear because there is no variable named title. There's only a variable called updated report. Um, and so we want to make sure that we have uh, our updated report and then the path to title. So something to pay attention to. If you need a refresher, feel free to check out our video on working with um, structured output like this JSON here. Uh, but that's basically it. At this point, I am now that I know that I have this test value working, I can go ahead and simply uh, copy and paste, you know, these two blocks into my main workflow here. So let me go ahead and paste those in. And we will move the generate asset block up and we don't need this display content block anymore. We'll move this display content block and connect it uh, to the uh, proper places. So let's make sure it's all linked up properly. And now our agent is complete. So we're completing all of that research and then we are then generating our asset and our asset is going to look uh, a little something like this with uh, exactly how we've styled it according to our specifications. So hopefully you learned something in this video. Please check out the Generate Asset Helper. Let me know if it's helpful. I'll include a link to this agent inside of the description of this video. Um, if you like this video, please drop us a like and don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more updates to Mind Studio. If you have questions, leave a question in the comments. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next time.